You need a high-end gaming PC or a workstation to get your job done, but you need to control it, right? Maybe you've spent all your money on those two and well, you're left with nothing for some of your most important, your mouse pad and your mouse. OCPC might have the perfect solution for you. Come check it out. All right, so here we are again with the OCPC MR11 mouse. We can see the RGB right over here, then RGB MR11 7200 DPI gaming mouse and this QR code, their logo right over here, MR11 gaming mouse. Just some information on the mouse over here, UPC serial number, EAN, all that good stuff and model number. All right, so let's go ahead, just open it up real quick so we can start using it. Here's the mouse and just checking for anything else in here. All right, so nothing else in this box. Then we have the little guide over here shows the assignment. One, two, three, four, five, six buttons. Left, right, roller middle button, forward button, back button, and DPI LED switching button. The note on the back, you suggestion, the mouse driver is very important. The funny thing is there really is no mouse driver or software that you use for this mouse other than just plugging in and it works. So it's kind of funny to read that. So coming over here, we have the mouse itself, OCPC, the roller. The roller kind of feels like it might be rolling on something not free. And in a minute, I'll show you what they all sound like, but that's just my initial on there. There's no left or right, just a click over here. The DPI selector, then the forward and back buttons, left and right. Okay. Opening over here, over here, as well as over here. That's kind of nice. Meta over here, and then the laser over there. All right, the cable is 6.56 feet or two meters. It is tightly braided. You can see that right over here in their paracord sheath. And it is a USB 2.0 connection, not 3.0 or USB type C. And now I want you to hear the clicks. That's the left. the right click, the wheel, and then the rolling. And then the forward and the back. All right, so let's go ahead and connect this real quick to a computer. All right, so this is a USB 2.0 mouse connection. So it's going to work on USB 2.0, USB 3.0. It's gonna work everywhere. So we'll just go ahead, plug it in. And that's it. There is no software to install. This just works. So let me go ahead and test it real quick. So real quick to show you guys how this works all the way up. Blue is 7,200 DPI. Down red is 3,200 DPI. Below that green, 2,400 DPI or the lowest one is 1200 DPI purple. So we'll go up all the way to the top. All right, so 7200. Let me try going to the lowest. Okay, that's really tight there. So 7200 feels ah, kind of loose. Although I'm here talking, so I wasn't paying 100% attention, but 7200 and then plus I have the viewfinder in front of me ah. and well I just don't play very often so 
not the greatest, but anyway, so I'm gonna jump down to 3200 DPI. This feels a little bit more natural for me. Jump back up to 7200, see if it's just how I was playing. Ah. All right. 7200 feels nice. 3200 feels a little bit nicer, so I'm going to jump down to 2400. See how that feels. Okay, this feels like I need to move it way too much. So 2400 feels horrible. I'm going to go down to 1200. I don't know why I kept changing colors there. Whoa. No, no, no. 1200 is no good. I don't know if he has a way out through there. So I'm going to bump it up to 3,200. Fire. Fire. I didn't even see anybody, but I was just shooting. <laughs> so, um, oh, okay. So I'm jumping up to 3200. Ah, I took too loose at 7200. I jumped up without saying it, but 3200 feels nice. I think that's where I'm comfortable at. So 3200 is where I feel nice. I'm going to finish up this game and get back to you in a sec. So while it's nice that we don't need to install additional software, the annoying part is there's no OSD. So we don't know what DPI we're on. We need to rely on these colors. So. I like to hover around the 32, but we also don't know what the polling rate is. We can find that here on this website. I'll link it down below in the description so you can check it out. So the way we test it is click to start. So we'll go ahead and click right here and then we'll do circles. So we can do 125 here. I've seen it get as high on this mouse as 130. So let's see by lowering that. 130. Let's see if we can do any better. We're getting 130 hertz polling rate. So with that being said, we can't get the 1000 hertz polling rate, but I haven't really felt a downgrade coming from a 1000 hertz down to 130 hertz. It feels almost the same and would actually benefit on older PCs because it doesn't continuously ping on the CPU as high, but nowadays that's kind of irrelevant. Now, for those of you that care, I opened up the mouse to find out exactly what kind of sensor we're working with. All right, so let's open her up real quick, see if we could find out what makes her tick. Can't find my real screwdriver, so I gotta use this 
old one. Okay, so it came apart relatively easy. So we can see that part. The whole shell itself acts as the RGB reflector. Cool. So it looks like we're using the A725F CMOS optical sensor. The max resolution we saw on this is 7,200 CPI. The max frame rate is 7,000 frames per second with a max speed of 60 inches per second. The max acceleration is 20 G and it is USB 2.0 compliant. Not only does it support Windows, but it actually supports Mac OS and Android as well. So you don't need additional software. The sensor supports resolutions of 200, 400, 600, 800, 1000, 1200, 1400, 1600, 1800, 2000, 2400, 3200, 4000, 4800, 5600, 6400, and 7200. So it actually does support 6400, my preferred resolution, but we can't get that. And it does support three different types of lighting mode flowing mode, synchronous mode, and reactive mode. But we can only utilize flowing mode. So then aside from the CMOS sensor, we have red and white switches. The white Huano switches will support up to 5 million clicks and the red ones will support up to 10 million clicks. The white ones are for the left and right mouse button and the 10 million clicks are for the forward and back button along the side of the mouse. I think they got them crisscrossed somehow, but anyway. So I've been editing the video so far on this mouse now for about a day or two. And I'd have to say comparing to my other mice, it's actually great. Now, mind you, I can't go to a thousand Hertz polling rate. I can only go to 130, but I really don't notice much of a difference at all. The differences I do notice are switching profiles all the way up to whatever DPI I can go to. I'm typically more comfortable at a 6,400 DPI in between 7,200 and 3,200, but you know, 7200 does work. I don't like to go that high. So that is a downfall on not being able to adjust that as you wish. Now, a lot of you don't like to install the mouse software and I totally get that. And then of course you want to have memory so that if you create your perfect profile, you can uninstall your software and that profile stays behind on the actual mouse. While this doesn't have software and it doesn't have that to save those profiles, those profiles of course are saved on the mouse. So when I moved it from that PC over here that I was gaming on to this one that I was doing my editing on, I stayed on DPI 3200, the red profile, and it stayed on 3200 when I brought it here. So that's definitely a plus. It does have some memory that carries over. Now, the bad part is because you don't have that software and you don't have an OSD, you don't know what profile you're on, DPI profile. So it might be confusing at times. You have to look at your mouse. Oddly enough, other colors appeared, but I still only had four profiles. I don't particularly care for it because my palm is on it, but you can't change the color. You can't turn it on. You can't turn it off. You can't change, have whatever kind of pattern you'd like. It's always on that rainbow. But again, your hand is covering it. So you never really see it unless your hand is off of it. So with all that said, I really do like the mouse. It doesn't have a bunch of features, but mice don't really need that many features. You just want it to work and it works well. Aesthetically, it's pleasing. It's a nice form fitting mouse. It fits perfectly in my hand. I don't play with the grip. I kind of play with the just rest your hand on there and it feels great. And it's a pretty mouse. The RGB, if you don't like that, uh, that's a downfall. And if you don't like having lights at all on your mouse, that's another downfall. But again, your hands on it, you don't really see it. All in all, I think it's a great mouse, especially for the price, you can't beat it. And the mouse pad, I think is pretty awesome too, because it's not something I really thought about the entire time. It just worked. It did what it should do. And it's not a tremendous mouse, but you do have options. I'm going to list all of them down below in my Amazon affiliated link. If you want to go ahead, check them out. But I'd love to know what you think. Is this a go for you or do you really need a higher end mouse? I'd love to know what you think. This is Iggy with This Bites For You reviewing the OCPC MR11 mouse. See you guys.